Welcome, my brother, and congratulations on taking this next step in Freemasonry. It's my sincere pleasure to welcome you to the ancient, accepted Scottish Rite, tell you about who we are and what we do, and help lead you to a greater appreciation of our extraordinary fraternity. When you and I became Master Masons, we became members of an international brotherhood that we know as the oldest fraternity in the world. The Scottish Rite, which is an appendant body to Blue Lodge Masonry, has a deep and rich history of its own. You'll be learning about that history a little later. But first, we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look at some of our degrees. Brother should be punishable by death. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And for yes. that, we shall kill you. Yes. 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 As you are now aware, Scottish Rite uses dramatic allegory to present basic Masonic principles, emphasizing a specific message or core value in each degree. Many degrees are drawn from the Old Testament, but within our Northern Masonic jurisdiction, some have been modified to reflect significant events in American history. Each degree depicts one of six core values, reverence for God, integrity, justice, toleration, service, and devotion to country. Brothers who take part discover deeper meaning in the degrees and also discover a spirit of camaraderie with their brethren. When you joined Scottish Rite, you witnessed at least five degrees before you attained the prestige of becoming a 32nd degree Mason. Over time, you'll have the opportunity to witness all of our 29 degrees. Beyond the 29 degrees, there is one degree more honorable and prestigious than the 32nd. That is the illustrious 33rd degree, which is only awarded through an elective process. Only about 2% of Scottish Rite Masons are nominated to receive the 33rd degree. Those who do become honorary members of our Supreme Council. Just as all Freemasons share the goal of seeking to become like the perfect Ashler, the 33rd degree is a destination that most will never actually attain. But by always pointing our steps toward that goal, we will be rewarded by the journey itself. And we can strive to exemplify the qualities of that ultimate degree in everything we do. The history of the Scottish Rite is full of curiosities and sometimes confusion. It starts in France in the 1740s after an expatriate from the Grand Lodge of England, a Scotsman named Andrew Michael Ramsay, had been elected Grand Chancellor of his new Parisian Lodge. Ramsay was so devoted to Masonry that he motivated his French brethren to create over a thousand degrees. Many of those were called Ecossais, or Scottish degrees, most likely to honor his allegiance to his native country. Several years later, Brother Stephen Morin, a wine merchant, brought the degrees to the New World via the West Indies. Then in 1767, Morin dispatched Brother Henry Andrew Franken to spread the degrees to the American colonies, where Freemasonry was already beginning to flourish. After establishing degrees in Charleston, South Carolina, Franken granted this patent for the formation of a Scottish Rite Lodge of Perfection in Albany, New York. Towards the end of the century, Degree-granting lodges of perfection were springing up randomly around the former colonies. Colonel John Mitchell in Charleston, South Carolina, sought to bring order out of chaos by convening 10 brothers and forming the first Supreme Council, which claimed jurisdiction of Scottish Rite Masonry throughout the world. There were conflicting groups in northern states claiming similar authority. In August of 1813, Colonel Mitchell resolved the confusion by chartering the group in New York as the Supreme Council for the Northern Masonic Jurisdiction of the United States. It would comprise the 15 states east of the Mississippi River and north of the Mason-Dixon Line, and would be headquartered in New York City. The Southern Supreme Council retained jurisdiction over all other states and territories, an arrangement that continues to this day. It was a grand commander of the Southern Jurisdiction, Albert Pike, who standardized many of the degrees, and under whose administration the name Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite first came into general use. In the early 20th century, the Southern Jurisdiction Supreme Council moved to the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., while the Northern Masonic Jurisdiction moved to Boston, and then eventually here to Lexington, just about a mile from where some of the first shots were fired in the American Revolution. Our building also houses the Scottish Rite Masonic Museum and Library which contains over 60,000 volumes pertaining to Freemasonry. 
as well as a widely varied collection of artifacts representing 200 years of Freemasonry in America. Now that you've got a sense of where we are and how we got here, I want to explain to you how our Northern Masonic jurisdiction is organized. The leader of the entire jurisdiction is our Sovereign Grand Commander. He directs the actions of the Supreme Council, which is the governing body that provides support services for all the states in the jurisdiction. The leaders in each state are known as active members. One of these is the state deputy, who is his state's executive officer. In the northern jurisdiction, the chapters inside of each state are called valleys. Among the 15 states, there are over 100 valleys, and their activities are coordinated by that state's Council of Deliberation, in which each valley is represented. Finally, every valley has up to four bodies. The Lodge of Perfection, the Council of Princes of Jerusalem, the Chapter of Rose Croy, and the Consistory. Each body has its unique characteristics and historically presents a variety of degrees. You saw a Lodge of Perfection in the Valley of Boston performing one of these earlier in this video. Scottish Rite operates independently of the Grand Lodge structure, but is firmly grounded in basic Masonic tenets. In the Northern Masonic jurisdiction, our Strategic Planning Committee has expanded on the most essential of these tenets and made it the core of our vision statement. Here's an example of how that vision works. After months of part-time work, Brother Alan Osborne had secured a job as manager of the Fastenal store in Saginaw and had moved into a comfortable rental property with his daughter Cora and his wife Samantha. Thank you much. Thank you. They were gaining financial stability, expecting another child, and everything seemed to be looking up. Then it all changed, literally overnight. About 2.45, I looked outside the window and noticed that there were flames shooting out up the side of the house. Alan just came into the room, said, get up, get Cora, and get out. Fire trucks got there. I'm standing on the other side of the road, watching them do their thing, and I felt honestly helpless. It's amazing how much it impacted me emotionally that it was gone. I guess it really didn't even, to be honest with you, sink in that it was gone, but it was gone. We didn't have renter's insurance. I immediately called him and made sure that he was all right. And what exactly did he need? And feeling that vulnerability initially made me feel standoffish. He was really stonewalling me, saying, I'm OK. I wanted to do it on my own, because that's the way that I was brought up. You're supposed to help a brother in need, but if you yourself can't help, or ask for help, then it's a bit of a hypocrisy. I said, well, yeah, I, I made that oath. She says, well, honey, we are the poor and distressed Masons right now. So I need to be willing to let them help me. And when I heard about Alan's plight, um, it immediately popped into my head. We, we have, need to do something about this from the Grand Almoners Fund. The membership committee within the Supreme Council of Scottish Rite, and along with the Sovereign Grand Commander McNaughton, had determined that it's about time that we head back to our roots and start taking care of each other. As a member, it's part of your member benefit. And you're helping each other. And whether you use the benefit or not makes no difference. It's just that as a Scottish Rite Mason, I know we're taking care of our own. On Sunday, I contacted David Bedwell. And he was inquiring whether the Supreme Council Almoners Fund could be of any assistance. He instructed me to send him an email with the facts and figures. The next morning, Monday morning, I had the email, which I forwarded to the Supreme Council. Supreme Council forwarded the email with their concurrence to the Grand Almoner. And Tuesday, Chuck calls me and he says, I just want you to know that you have been approved to receive assistance from the Almoners Fund. I said, well, that's, that's great news. And he says, yeah, you'll be getting a check within a week here uh, for $10,000 to help your family. Uh, <laughs> First thing I said was, Chuck, you got to tell me not to drive when you're going to tell me something like that. I received the check on Wednesday, presented it to Alan at the, in the lodge here on Thursday evening. And Chuck got up in front of everyone and explained what was happening because not everybody knew the full story and explained to them what this fund is, the Almoners Fund, what it does, why it exists. I had tears in my eyes when the, the check was handed over to Al. It made all of us stand up and take notice that 
This is what Masons do. And we're not going to nickel and dime. We are going to take care of our members, our brothers, in such a way that the relief is really, really positive. To go from a month ago to having absolutely nothing, to having a house that we can stay in, we have a bedroom, we have clothes, my daughter has toys that she can play with. The beauty of the Grand Almoners Fund is there's no forms, there's no paperwork, there's no red tape. To have things move that fast and to be that impactful, I, I, I can't even explain There's the speed of it. The relief was in less than a week from when the damage had been. And for the first time in a week, we felt normalcy. We felt things were OK. And it was them and their help that helped pull me out of where we were at that time in my family. And that was in that darkness that the fire created. They brought us back into the light. We hope this video will enrich your understanding of the exceptional and historic fraternity you've just joined. Remember, like anything else in Freemasonry, or in life for that matter, the more you put into Scottish Rite Masonry, the more you'll get out of it. As you become involved, you can look forward to an exciting journey and a deeply fulfilling experience as a proud member of the Northern Masonic jurisdiction of the ancient accepted Scottish Rite.